What is up guys? So this video is going to tell you how to frame the walls for the modern shed you just saw. It's going to run through how to actually lay out the wall and position your wall studs. It'll show you how to lift the walls into place. And it'll also go through a bunch of tips and tricks for a successful shed wall framing installation. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. So today's video is all about the shed walls, but in my last video, I went through actually how to frame the shed base. So if you still need a base, you can check out that video. I'll link it in the description. So this lean-to modern shed will obviously have four walls. The front wall is the most complicated with the headers. The side walls have the window rough and openings and the back wall is pretty standard. Let's start with the back wall because it's the simplest. Shed walls are almost always going to be framed with 2x4s, and as you can see, we have a 2x4 at the top, which is the top plate, a 2x4 at the bottom, which is the bottom plate, and all of the vertical pieces of lumber in between the top and bottom plate are called the studs. When determining your stud spacing and also the overall height of the wall, you want to consider the type of siding you're going to be using. In this case, we're using T111 or LP Smart Siding, and we want to make sure that our studs are placed so they're in between the two adjacent sections of siding, and we want the height to be appropriate as well. So spend some time planning your layout. So planning out your stud spacing as well as just the overall layout of the shed is usually the most time consuming part of building your own shed, which is why I put together the shed build course down in the description. So if you wanna know exactly what dimensions and stud spacing I use for this modern shed, you can check that link in the description. Now at this point, I have all of the wall studs for the back wall laid out, and now I'm gonna cut them to the appropriate height. In this case, that's seven feet, eight and five sixteenths inches. We're gonna go ahead and mark this for all the studs, marking it with a pen and a carpenter square and then cutting it with a miter saw. Repeat this for all the studs for your back wall. I'm gonna need safety, tell the can't snake it. Ray gun, I'm safety. So after cutting the top plate, bottom plate, and all the wall studs to length, what you're gonna do is clamp the top plate and bottom plate together. And the reason we're doing this is that it's gonna allow us to mark the stud locations on the top plate and bottom plate at the same time. Now, our stud spacing is gonna be based on 16 inch on center spacing. Obviously, we're gonna make a few minor adjustments to ensure that our T111 siding is gonna land in the middle of a stud. So here you can see I have both the top and bottom plate clamped together, and I'm using a tape measure to mark the stud location in accordance with the course plan. So I'm using my tape measure, making the mark for each wall stud. We made our mark everywhere. So we're going to line up the two by four there. And then obviously it's going to occupy this space on the right hand side. So we did that all the way across, got our mark, got our mark, got our mark, got our mark all the way to the end there. Something you want to keep in mind when you're framing these walls is the crown of the lumber. The crown of lumber is defined as the slightly upward arching curvature that you observe when looking down a board's narrowest dimensional edge. You want to make sure that all the wall studs are crowned the same way. So as you can see here, I'm taking the wall studs and I'm sighting down the narrowest edge to confirm the crown. In this case, I want to have all the studs facing crown up. So my brother and I are making sure that each one is crown up, which we did previously, and then positioning them in place between the top and bottom plate. Okay, so we have our wall preliminarily framed out here. As you can see, we have all of our marks. I'm gonna go to the other side because I think it's a little bit clearer. Um, we have our mark there, our mark there, our mark there. And again, we have these wall studs marked in accordance with the course guide. And then what we're gonna do is take our nail gun and nail two nails into each wall stud through the top and bottom plate, as you're seeing. So a few things to keep in mind as you nail the studs into the top and bottom plate in position. One, you wanna make sure that the outermost studs are completely flush with the top plate and bottom plate. And then you also wanna make sure that when you're nailing with a nail gun that you have your hand far enough away that if, God forbid, the nail sticks out, it will never be long enough to contact your hand. Repeat this process for each stud that's part of the back wall. You can use either three inch or three and a half inch exterior rated nails. Just use nails that are compatible with the nail gun that you have. So after attaching each stud in place, my brother and I lift the wall out of place and preliminarily position it, making sure it looks good. And then we're gonna move that out of the way as we go and frame the side walls. You do have the option to just stand the wall up immediately by using a two by four as a brace. You wanna make sure that your wall is perfectly plumb and then you'll go ahead and attach that brace to the wall as well as the shed base frame. 
But in our case, we're gonna sand up the walls later. So after framing the back wall, we're gonna move on and we're gonna frame the side walls. And because the side walls are completely identical, we're gonna frame one and then basically repeat the exact same process for the second side wall. So I'm framing these side walls in accordance with the course guide. And the first step in that is to cut our top and bottom plate to nine feet, five inches. And then our studs again to seven feet, eight and five sixteenths inches, just as was done for the back wall. So here I am grabbing the first two by four by 10 piece of lumber, and I'm gonna mark it right here using a pen and a carpenter square at nine foot five inches. And then we're simply gonna cut our top plate to size using a miter saw. So after cutting the first top plate to uh, nine foot five inches, I'm going and I'm placing it on top of the shed frame base so I can start assembling the layout for the whole sidewall. Here I am taking the bottom plate, and again, I'm gonna mark nine foot five inches, and then use the carpenter square to get a straight line and then you'll see, I'll cut it again on the miter saw. After cutting the bottom plate to size, I'm taking it over and I'm gonna place it on top of the shed base across from the top plate that I cut previously. So for efficiency, I also cut the top plate and bottom plate for the second sidewall at this point. That way, I would be able to mark the stud spacing for both sidewalls on the top and bottom plates at the same time. The sidewall stud spacing is based on 16 inch on center convention. So as you can see, I have the top and bottom plate for both sidewalls, which is four pieces of lumber total. And I am using clamps to hold those together and then using a tape measure to mark the location of each stud. Repeat this process until the location of each stud is marked on the top and bottom plates. Again, you wanna plan out your stud spacing layout so that the edge of each piece of siding is gonna land directly in the center of a stud. So after marking each stud location using my tape measure, I went back with my carpenter square and I just touched up any of the location markings. So I'll make the line, make it very pronounced, and then I'm marking on which side of the line the stud is gonna rest. And that's designated with the X that you're seeing there. So I just repeated this process for each stud, marking the stud location and then indicating which end of the line the stud is actually going to be placed. So after marking all of the stud locations, we're assembling the wall frame and laying it out on top of the shed base. And make sure that you crown all of your lumber to make sure that it's facing the same way. Then we're taking our nail gun just as before and installing two nails through the top plates and bottom plates and into each stud at the locations we marked previously on the top and bottom plates. Once each stud has been nailed, we lifted the wall in place and then moved it out of the way in preparation for framing the second shed wall. We cut all of our studs to length according to the plan previously, as well as the top and bottom plate to nine foot five inches. And here I am showing the side wall and something to note is that we're installing all of the full studs first and we'll go back and frame the window in later. So here we are nailing each stud into place, going through the top and bottom plates with two nails going through both. We repeated this process just like we did for the back wall and the first side wall. Again, have help if you can. Uh, it really helps to have someone make sure that it's flush on both the top and bottom and then nail it into place. And here's a quick time lapse of the rest of the nailing process and keep an eye on safety. Ultimately, safety is your responsibility, but make sure your hands are clear whenever you're nailing and keep your assistant safe. So something important to note here is that the stud spacing for these shed sidewalls is based on a 14 inch by 21 inch window as indicated in the course material. So if you plan on using a bigger or smaller window, you're gonna need to adjust that sidewall stud spacing around the window accordingly. What we're gonna do now is cut out all the components for the window. As you can see, that consists of cripple studs, king studs, the window sill plates, jack studs, the window header, all that stuff. So refer to the course material for that. And I'll also link one of my blogs in the description, which goes over the shed window framing process step by step. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and mark our four feet to frame in our windows. And this four feet marking is for the cripple studs at the bottom of the window that are gonna support the sill plate. So I'm cutting two for the first uh, sidewall and then I'll cut another two four foot cripple studs for the second sidewall. So just repeating this process, cutting them at four feet, using one as a template to mark the length for the next one. Then you're gonna cut out the other window components like the jack studs and the sill plate based on the window you're gonna be installing. Then I'm simply using the jack stud I just cut as a template to mark the length of the next two by four. And after I was happy with how everything was lining up flush, I marked the other side and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut that two by four to length. So they're exactly identical. Once you've cut all of the jack studs, cripple studs, etc., to length, we can go ahead and assemble it in place on the wall. 
At this stage, take all of your window components and start placing them within your side wall. So here I am taking the four foot cripple studs at the bottom, positioning them adjacent to the full studs. And then I'm taking my sill plate right there, dry fitting to make sure that I'm content with how everything looks. And then I'm taking my 21 and a half inch jack studs and positioning them in place between the window. Then I put in my header. And then I'm actually taking the shed window that I purchased previously and making sure that I'm okay with how it lines up within that rough opening. Once I was content with how everything would fit, I took my nail gun and I started nailing the cripple studs into the bottom plate as you're seeing there and also attaching them to the full stud that is right next door, the king stud if you will. Install as many nails as you need in order to be comfortable with how everything is attached to the adjacent piece of lumber. I'm going about every you know eight inches or so. I think more is better than less in this application, but continue to nail everything together. Here I am taking the sill plate and nailing it into the cripple stud below. And then what you'll see in a second is I will take my jack studs and I'll attach them to the side wall studs as you're seeing here. Again, using a bunch of nails to ensure that I have a good secure connection and that these window frames are going to be secure. And then finally, I'm putting in the window header and I'm gonna take my nail gun and attach that into the jack studs below using two nails per connection for that. And then at the top there, you can see I don't have those jack studs or cripple studs rather in there because I'm field verifying to make sure that the plan dimension that I have included is actually gonna be perfect here. In my case it was, but you might have you know an eighth inch discrepancy depending on the compounded error. Here I am cutting them to size and then I'll go ahead and place them within the windows rough opening frame. There I am positioning it and then I'll take my nail gun and hit those a couple times, making sure that it's secure. And once I repeat this process for the other side, I will have a perfectly framed window in one of the shed sidewalls. So as I finish up framing this shed sidewall window, keep in mind that both of the shed sidewalls are 100% identical. So you'll simply need to repeat the exact same process shown in this lesson for the second shed sidewall. After framing the shed sidewalls, we can finally frame the front wall of the shed. Now, as mentioned previously, the front wall is the most complicated because we have the large rough opening for the door as well as the headers above the door and the windows. So with that being said, let's start framing the shed's front wall. So when planning out your front wall, you're obviously gonna need a header over the door's rough opening. In our case, we have a six foot wide roll up door that we installed. And you're also gonna need a header over the top to distribute the weight over the windows. The wall studs are gonna be two by fours and our headers are gonna be two by six lumber. Plan out your front wall layout depending on the size of your door and how big your overall shed is gonna be. Feel free to use this 3D framing model as the basis for your shed, but if you want the exact dimensions I used, you can check the link in the description. After developing a front wall framing plan based on the length of your door and also the overall length and size of your shed, cut all of your two by four studs to length. After cutting all the two by fours, let's put them in place. Because the front wall has so many components, I recommend that you keep track of them by preliminarily placing them on the shed base frame as they will appear on the front wall, or you can label each piece or do a combination. But the moral of the story is make sure you keep track of your cuts and stay organized so that you can arrange your front wall in place on the shed base frame and keep track of everything in an organized fashion. In my opinion, it's easiest to keep track of everything by placing each cut in position as it will appear on the front wall as you make the cut. So after cutting each two by four stud and top plate to length, I cut the two by six inch headers out. To start, I cut the longer nine foot nine inch headers out first on the two by six inch lumber by marking and then making the cut just as before with the miter saw. Note that when you see each header on the section view, you're actually gonna need two boards cut to the exact same length. So here's the first two inch by six inch header board and then I'm gonna cut another one at the exact same length right after this. You can use the first cut as a template to mark the length for the second if you find that's easier. So something to keep in mind as we build these headers is that two by four lumber is actually one and a half inch by three and a half inches. So when we have our wall studs, that's gonna be three and a half inches. And then when we end up cutting our headers and positioning them uh, vertically, they're only gonna be one and a half inch by one and a half inch, which gives us three inches, which is a half inch shorter than the wall stud. So in order to get that extra thickness for the header so that it's uniform all the way across that wall, we're gonna cut a strip of plywood and put it in between both pieces of the header, which will kind of sandwich it in there and that'll give us the full uh, three and a half inches we need so it sits flush with the wall. I'll explain it in the field right now. 
Okay, so we're constructing our header right here, but as you can see, our wall is gonna be this wide, which is, as you can see, three and a half inches. This header is only gonna be just about three inches. So in order to get that extra half an inch, what we're gonna do is cut a piece of plywood and put it in between. So in order to cut that strip, we're gonna take our 1532s inch plywood and we're gonna make a mark at five and a half inches since that is the nominal width of a two by six inch piece of lumber. After marking that five and a half inches, I'm gonna use a chalk line to go ahead and establish that line all the way across. And once I've established that line, I now have my cut reference to cut a five and a half inch strip by eight feet. And as you can see here, I'm simply using a circular saw to cut the five and a half inch strip of plywood all the way across. And because it's a full sheet of plywood, that's gonna be an eight foot long strip. Because we have a nine foot nine inch header, I'm gonna need to get an additional piece of plywood strip cut so that I can complete the entire nine foot nine inch length of header. Here I am marking that again with a chalk line to five and a half inches, and then again taking my circular saw and cutting it right across that reference line to get another strip. So because we have our one eight foot strip, we're gonna need another one foot nine inch strip to get the full nine foot nine inch header length. So I just made that measurement on the other piece of strip I cut. And now at this point, I have nine foot nine inches of five and a half inch plywood strip. So here I am taking my two inch by six inch lumber and I'm positioning the piece of pretty much half inch plywood in between. There's the full eight foot long segment and here is the partial segment on the other side. I'm just positioning that in place on top of one piece of the two by six inch header and then I'm taking the other two inch by six inch header placing it on top. And then I used bar clamps to secure everything while I nailed the header together. After nailing through one side of the header, I simply flipped the header over and nailed in the other side to make sure it was perfectly secure. After constructing a larger nine foot nine inch header for the entire front wall of the shed, I moved over and I created the smaller header for over the roll up door. After cutting the first header to six foot six inches, I'm gonna cut the second piece of the header to six foot six inches. And then just as was done before, we're gonna take a strip of plywood and sandwich it in between. Just like we did for the larger nine foot nine inch header. So once we cut all of the shed's front wall components, we wanted to start by actually anchoring the outermost studs. Okay, so we have everything framed up. We're gonna start with the outside frame and get everything tied together, and then we'll work ourselves towards the inside. So we'll start here on the corner, and get everything nailed in place. So as you can see, we used a bar clamp to get all of the studs tied in together, and then we used a nail gun to go ahead and nail through the bottom plate and into the bottom of each of those studs on the outermost side there. So use enough nails, probably two per stud, and use a bar clamp to make sure that everything is flush. Moving on to the top, you can see that we have the header in place there, and we're using a bar clamp to pull everything tight, and then again, using your nail gun, just nail the components together be sure to nail each component to the adjacent component to make sure that your front wall is gonna be very sturdy. Here I am going through the top plate into the outermost stud, and then I'm going through the top plate into the header, and then I'm toe nailing in a few nails from the header into the studs below. And then again, I'm taking some nails and going through the outermost stud into the supporting studs, and then moving on to the other side, repeating the exact same process. Again, that's nailing through the bottom plate into each stud, and then my brother right there is putting weight down to make sure we're flush, and we're using the bar clamp too to tie everything together, and then we're gonna move on to the top and do the exact same thing. Again, this is pretty redundant. Use clamps as needed to make sure that everything is flush and lining up as it should, and use a bunch of nails to secure everything in place. You might need to use a hammer to move things around, um, but yeah, just take your time. Make sure you're happy with it before you nail it. Toenail in as necessary, and if you have any nails that are sticking out, be sure to use a hammer to make sure that you hammer them in flush so they're not protruding out and creating an issue when you go to install the siding. After 
anchoring the outermost studs, we started positioning the rough opening for the door. So we're gonna take our six foot by six inch header, position that there, and then as you can see, we have our horizontal two by fours going in there that rest on top of the studs in between. But basically just make sure that your front wall layout is consistent with how you planned it. And then we're taking our nail gun and we're attaching things in place as soon as we get them flush and positioned where they need to be. As you can see here, my brother and I are consulting with our iPad, which has the dimensions and the course plan on it. Okay, so as we do the uh, the headers here, what we're showing is that from the end here till here is two feet. So we got 24 inches is where we'll anchor this. And then we have six feet for the door header right here, that's six feet. And then we have our other two feet right here. Gets a total of 10 feet. So we have our marks, we can go ahead and get this nailed in now. So here I am moving up to the top of the door's rough opening, and again, use nails to attach every stud in place. There you just saw me toenailing in from the header into the studs below, and again, use a hammer if you need to make sure that you have no protruding nails. Here I am going through the 2x4 there into the header below, and you're basically just going to go through, continue to use bar clamps to pull everything flush, and attach everything in place with nails in accordance with the coarse material dimensions. So the last thing we need to do in order to complete the front wall is we need to complete the framing for the three windows that are positioned above the door. So you're going to cut all your blocking to size and as you can see there we put a stop block in on the saw because we're going to be cutting a lot of the same dimensions. Now the way you position these cripple studs is going to depend on how you framed your front wall but we're consulting with the course plan there and we're simply going to nail those in above the door and also space them appropriately for the windows above. So as you can see here we're spacing the blocking in accordance with the field guide and something I'll note is it's a little bit tricky to actually install the pieces of blocking there because it tends to move around so it's not as critical for ones like this where you can go through that top header and then into the piece of blocking but they might have the tendency to move around on you as you go to hit them with the nail gun so just be safe make sure your hands are clear use a clamp as needed to hold them in place sometimes you might want to use a screw you may need to toenail in from the side in a couple locations but it's going to be a little bit tricky, but I guarantee you that you can make this work. Just make sure that the pieces of blocking are flush with the header below and then the window header above and toenail them in as needed. Continue to install all of your cripple studs as needed to get your front wall framing plan completed for the windows. <laughs> all right, we got the whole thing finally framed up. So with all the walls framed, now I'll show you how we can lift all the walls into place and install the double top plate to secure them permanently in place along the shed. So when lifting the shed walls into place, I highly recommend that you start with the front wall because it's the heaviest and it's gonna be the most difficult. As you can see, we started to experience some sliding at the bottom there when we tried to lift it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting some temporary screws in, which will act as a stop in the event that we try to lift it and it starts sliding, the base plate there will catch on those screws and prevent the wall from sliding off the shed base frame. After that, I was respecting the weight of this wall, so I brought the dog inside just to protect against any possibility of some catastrophic incident of the wall falling, and then we went back to it. This wall is going to weigh hundreds of pounds, especially if it hasn't dried out. So get the help of at least one or two people when lifting it. Try not to throw out your back. Definitely get the help you need and lift it into place. As you can see, we're not experiencing any sliding because the front of that wall at the bottom is catching on those screws and then we're just continuing to lift it until we have it perfectly vertical. Once we had it positioned, we did a little bit of shifting to make sure that the wall was completely flush with the edges of the shed base frame. And then you're also gonna wanna check the front of the wall to make sure that's also perfectly flush with the shed base frame. Once you're pretty happy with how it looks, you're gonna put in some temporary screws or nails as I'm doing there, just to preliminarily hold it in place. Now these temporary fasteners will definitely not hold the wall up by itself. What you really should use is a 2x4 brace that you install along the outermost wall stud and then attach to the shed base frame. I didn't do that here because I had the luxury of a helper who could hold the wall while I got the adjacent wall positioned in place, but I highly recommend that you install that brace if you're doing this alone or even if you have a helper, that really is the correct way to do it. 
So as you can see, I have my brother holding the front wall in place as I get the first side wall positioned. So again, I recommend that you put a two x four brace and install that temporarily to fasten the front wall to the shed base frame. But because we were, I don't know, trying to be macho or something, we tried to do this without it and it did work out, but it's really not the best way to go. So what you're seeing here is me trying to get the shed side wall completely flush with the shed base frame. And as you can see, I was a little bit worried about hitting the front wall. So I asked my brother to shift over to the opposite side of the front wall while I held it in place. And then I moved back over to the side wall and tried to shimmy it into position. As you can see with his help, it was much easier. After getting it completely flush with the outermost side of the shed base frame, we did some final positioning and made sure we were perfectly happy with where it was positioned. I used a hammer right there to get it perfectly connected to the front wall and making sure it was completely flush before grabbing a bar clamp and temporarily attaching the side wall to the front wall in preparation for fastening. I used a couple screws to secure the side wall bottom plate to the shed base frame. And then again, we have the bar clamp connecting the two walls, which kind of helped to hold it in position preliminarily. With that done, I grabbed the second side wall and prepared to position it in place on top of the shed base frame. So as you can see, this isn't the easiest of processes to do by yourself, but lifting it into place wasn't too bad. It's just the shifting it and moving it along the shed base frame that's kind of cumbersome. But after a couple iterations, I got it pretty close to where it needed to be. My brother shifted over to the side that we were working on, and then I pushed it into place to get it perfectly flush with the front wall of the shed. Again, you're gonna confirm that it's flush on the side of the shed base frame as well. So after a couple iterations of that, we grabbed a bar clamp and we secured it temporarily just like we did on the other side of the shed. And then as you can see here, I'm using a post leveler to make sure that the front wall is perfectly vertical. And we're also gonna check the square of the shed later on to confirm that we're perfectly square and that everything is plumb. After that, I grabbed my drill and some exterior rated screws and I put a few screws from the bottom plate into the shed base frame. And then I'm taking some screws here and I'm connecting the side wall to the front wall permanently with a handful of screws. With those connected, I grabbed my brother and then we grabbed the back wall and we moved it into place, which was obviously much easier with two people. We then lifted it up into place on the shed base frame and then we adjusted it as needed to get it perfectly flush with the back of the shed base frame. Once we were happy with how everything was looking and it was perfectly flush, we installed some screws from the bottom plate into the shed base frame to temporarily secure it in place. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a handful of screws and we're gonna attach the side wall to the back wall, kind of toenailing it in at an angle. A very important part of the shed build that I actually did not capture was you need to square your shed. And what this means is you're gonna run a tape measure from both corners at the top of your shed to make sure that the distance is the same from both sets of opposite corners. Here's what I mean. So when you see right here, you wanna make sure that your walls aren't skewed or slightly going to the left or right because that means that your siding won't line up right. You'll have little errors all over the place. So take a tape measure, measure from the inside corners or the outside corners of the two opposite sides and keep adjusting your shed walls until you get dimensions that are the exact same from this set of dimensions from opposite corners and this set of dimensions from opposite corners. So after squaring your shed and making sure that your walls are perfectly plumb and that nothing is skewed, I went back and then I took a bunch of additional screws and made sure that my connections between adjacent walls were very sturdy. I then went back and applied additional nails in the bottom plate and I did that all the way around the shed. Basically, install as many fasteners as you need to feel confident in your shed wall framing and that your walls are not gonna move around too much. As you can see, I'm also attaching the side wall to the front wall using a bunch of nails, and I obviously did this for both sides. After installing all of the additional fasteners, I went and removed the bar clamps to proceed to the next step. Okay, so that was definitely a little sketchy. Um, this was a lot bigger than I guess I realized on my model. And you know, this front wall here probably weighs a couple hundred pounds. It was difficult to lift, but we have it in place right now. It's uh, it's big, it's, uh, it's something. After lifting all four of the shed walls into place and confirming that the walls are perfectly square, which is basically just indicating that you don't have it skewed either way and that each wall is perfectly plumb, 
what you're going to want to do is install the double top plate along the top of the walls and that's going to secure and tie all the walls together so for the double top plate you're going to have two pieces of top plate that are nine foot eight and a half inches and this is going to be long enough to span the entire length of the side wall while also overlapping the entire length of the back wall which is that additional three and a half inches cut your two pieces of nine foot eight and a half inch top plate and then position it in place on top of the sidewall. Make sure you get rid of any dirt or debris that might be on top of the sidewall, just so you don't sandwich it in between. The cleaner your lumber is, the longer it'll last. So get it positioned, make sure that the double top plate is completely flush with the sidewall. And once you're happy with how everything is looking, spend some time looking at the back end to make sure that it's perfectly flush with the back wall. Once the piece of double top plate is positioned where you need it, attach it to the side wall and back wall using a bunch of nails. After attaching the first piece of nine foot, eight and a half inch top plate on the other side of the shed, we moved on to the near side of the shed and attached it the exact same way. As you can see, we're using a bar clamp to make sure that the double top plate is perfectly flush with the side wall below. Use plenty of nails to fasten the double top plate to the wall below. Next up, Cut the back piece of double top plate to nine foot five inches and position it in place on top of the back wall. Then you'll simply attach it the same way you did for the other side pieces of double top plate. We're up here at the top, got our top cap. We're just gonna install this now. As shown, use a bar clamp to make sure that your double top plate is completely flush with the top of the wall below, and then use a bunch of framing nails to attach the double top plate to the back wall below. At this point, your shed wall framing is complete, and after you give it a quick strength test to make sure you're comfortable with how everything is secured, you can move on to the next lesson. So for this next step, we're gonna cut out the segment of bottom plate that's at the base of the door's rough opening. So as you can see here, there is a six foot segment of bottom plate that we're gonna to need to cut out at the base of the door's rough opening. To do this, I recommend that you take a reciprocating saw and simply hold it flush with the rough opening of the door against the wall stud, and then slide it down until you've cut all the way through that one side of two by four bottom plate. After you've cut one side free, you're gonna move on to the other side and you're gonna cut that other side of the bottom plate free. And again, use your reciprocating saw and cut straight down along that stud. Continue to use a reciprocating saw until you cut all the way through the two by four. And once you get all the way through it, you'll be able just to use your hands to lift that bottom plate out of place. Here I am checking to make sure it's loose. And then I'm moving here to the other side to completely pull it out of the opening. Once you've completed that, you're pretty much done. In the next video, we're going to be installing the siding and we're also going to be installing the roof rafters. So definitely subscribe if you want to be notified when those videos drop. And if you like this video, please drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you like content like this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.